Hello everyone, this is Artorius from Graphic River and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create some very sophisticated fiery effects in Photoshop using the animated fire embers and sparks Photoshop action. This is a sample animation which has been created using the action. It only contains two effects. There are two layers here above the background image. The action itself has 30 effects that you can place. Some of them are intended for covering the entire image that you have to give an overall look similar to this. Some of the other effects are intended to be placed over the subject of your image, such as this one. This is a, an animation containing three effects placed somewhere here and overlapping. Of course, it lasts for one second. You can use this action to create some various scenes. Bigger, smaller in size, with more or less detail. You can either save your animation as uh, an animated GIF which is perfectly looping and because it lasts for one second it won't be very very large in size or you can save your video by uh, rendering directly to video from Photoshop rendering the video and you can have a high resolution video that you can place in your own scenes, your video projects, whatever they might be. You can also use the action in uh, combination with um, some of my other actions, such as the animated fire Photoshop action. So you can create some various scenes containing fire effects using both the fire elements from the animated fire uh, Photoshop action and uh, the sparks and embers from this action. Now, in order to use the action and create these effects, you will of course have to load the action into Photoshop. So from the actions panel, which should be opened, make sure it's open from the window actions. From the window, from the actions panel, I will click here and load actions and select the animated fire embers and sparks Photoshop action. Now, as you can see in the file you downloaded, the zip file, there will be the action itself and the folder containing the effects. So right now we will be loading the action into Photoshop. This is the action folder. It, it uh, has uh, two actions actually. It is one for CS5 version of Photoshop and one from for, um, for Photoshop CC. Because I'm using Photoshop CC 2017 here we will use the CC version of the action. So, 
you will have to open an image in Photoshop. I deleted uh, the two fire elements, leaving only the background image, which is exactly what you get when you open an image into Photoshop. So this is an image. It is uh, nineteen twenty pixels in size. It can be larger, it can be smaller, it doesn't matter. And the image is image mode RGB with eight bits per channel. Make sure you have your image in the same mode too. So having this image we of course want to create the effects, want to place some effects of uh, embers and sparks into the scene. So with the CC version of the action selected I am clicking on play and now the the action prompts us to select a file. So from the fire embers and sparks folder, you can see there are 30 other folders. These contain our effects. There are 30 effects coming with the action. So, by opening a folder, let's see, folder 21, what is this? Contains these effects, folder 22, 23, I'm searching for an effect similar to the ones I was having uh, before I deleted them. Ah, can be 28. So as you can see in folder 28 and also in the other folders, there are 30 images, JPG images, named 28 because we are in folder 28, underline 000 to 28 000 so in totally, totally there are 30 files. These are basically the frames of the effect we will be using into our scene. So Photoshop prompts us to load a file which will be treated as an image sequence. The file we select will come as an image sequence with the other files here. So we will have to select the first file in the sequence of images, which will be the one ending in 00, zero not zero 01 or other. It will be 00. zero. So Photoshop is treating this file selected as an image sequence and it it's actually loading all the fires here, here as a sequence. So I am selecting this file, the one ending in 00, zero and clicking on open. And now we have an animated layer loaded into Photoshop. You can view it in the timeline panel window timeline to show or hide the timeline panel <clears throat> so you can see there is a one second animation contained here and we have the layer loaded and positioned in our scene now you must know that these effects come in a 4K size that is around 4000 pixels in width so if your image is smaller in size 
such as this image here, which is uh, approximately half, half in size. Uh, the effects will uh, come out of the, the scene. So we can see something here, but it's uh, outside the scene, so we will just have to reposition using the move tool, reposition our effects where we want it. This is how they look. Or we can scale it using the edit transform scale to let's say 50% or in this case larger. And you can position it like this. So this is an example. You can transform the animated layer in every way you want. It is also a smart layer. So it doesn't lose quality when resizing, uh, uh, rotating it or whatever transformation you might be causing to it. So I'm going to click OK on the transform. And we have the animated layer here placed over our scene. We can preview the scene by clicking on play. Firstly, Photoshop it is rendering the frames of our animation. And now it is playing constantly and it is looping. So this is our effect. Now, uh, to show you some settings, I am uh, rendering the preview right now in 50% quality to do it faster because I'm also at 50% zoom when viewing the scene. So the scene is actually double in size. It is something like this. So to preview faster, I zoomed out a bit and previewing in 50% uh, resolution. I also have the loop playback enabled. So the animation is self-repeating. Now, you can have as many of these animated layers of these effects in Photoshop as you want. You can create a composition which has uh, maybe 15 fire embers and some of them are smaller in size, some of them are bigger having lots and lots of sparks and uh, all these embers flying around, slower, faster. Okay, we can place one more. We can place, let's say, this is coming from the side. This is also coming from the side. This is bigger. This, this is coming from somewhere in the lower right area. <clears throat> so I'm, I'll be using it. So it's file 24.0000. Select it, open. And we have this layer placed. I am moving it where I want it be something like this and clicking on play it is rendering the scene again 
it will take a bit more time as we have two animated effects right now in the scene and this is how our, how our effect looks okay as you can see the the animated layers which are also smart layers have some filters applied to them which are right now disabled there are levels filter hue saturation and brightness and contrast you can use these to show you you can use these filters to make some adjustments to the way the effects look from a levels filter which controls the intensity of the scene also the brightness can be used to uh, add a more popping effect to the fire embers there is also the hue saturation which you can use to adjust the hue and thus how the, the colors look you can make them blue in this case if you want So you can create some sci-fi effects in your scene. Depending on what you want to achieve. So you can actually use these effects to create some uh, some uh, animation which might have nothing to do with the fire embers but with something sci-fi okay so I told you you can also use the effects to have them positioned positioned somewhere over the subject such as such as these ones are there are three effects and you can see from the preview how they have been transformed so this layer has been positioned something like this in the scene scaled it to 45% in size I believe it was also transformed with a flip uh, horizontal flip in this case and it was place, placed here also this one you can see how this effect looks so it's smaller and it was placed over the hand there was also a larger effect which was also placed over the hand okay so I told you you can transform the 
the layers as you want to wherever you might want to place them to have your effect this layer has a brightness and contrast filter applied for boost in uh, in its look if we want to render all the three layers are being rendered in our animation just a bit more and this is how it looks okay I also told you you can use the the action in combination with some other actions such as with the animated fire Photoshop action so when you create a result using the animated fire Photoshop action this is the result which has in this case there are folders groups of layers coming with the animated fire action there are one two three four five six seven eight nine nine effects of fire placed in the scene covering the subject you can also run the animated fire embers action to add more sparks and fire embers to the same scene and then save your result as an animated gif or render to video <coughs> Work for that. <laughs> uh, now you can save the image, the animation that you have as an animated GIF. So you can go to the file export, say for web. and you can have animated GIF which is rendering the preview right now but this is in the full size of the image so I will be clicking on escape and setting a new image size let's say 500 pixels it is rendering the scene as an animated GIF very much actually but this depends on the complexity of the scene you have okay and looping options you should select forever these settings determine the quality and of course the size of the image the animated GIF image and preview clicking play and you can save as an animated GIF which you place on web it will loop indefinitely and will look very very good so click on save and save your file
you can also render the video from the render video button in the timeline panel but you will need to have Adobe Media Encoder installed to render to video directly from Photoshop if you don't have Adobe Media Encoder installed you can use an image to save as a sequence of JPGs that you can place in your own uh, video editing software okay so basically this is it thank you very much my tutorial